Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. The Canadian Cabinet Minister, who is in charge of the Canadian International Development Agency, has said he is going to review Canada's aid to Haiti, suggesting they might suspend new, new money for Haiti. And here's what he said. Our government has a responsibility to maximize the value of Canadian taxpayers' dollars. However, we remain concerned with the slow progress of development in Haiti, in large part due to weaknesses in their governing institutions. Fatino said this in a statement posted on CETA's website on Tuesday. Now joining us to talk about development in Haiti and what he thinks of the Canadian minister's statement is Mark Weisbrod. Mark is co-director of the Centre for Economic and Policy Research in Washington, D.C. He's a regular columnist for The Guardian and a regular contributor to The Real News. Thanks for joining us, Mark. Thank you. So what do you make of what the minister's saying? They're saying that there hasn't been enough progress, they need more transparency, uh, and that the, essentially the governing institutions of Haiti are failing. Well, the first two things, there hasn't, there definitely hasn't been enough progress. I mean, it's terrible. You had, you know, 1.5 million people were made homeless by the earthquake. You still have 358,000 of them living in camps. A lot of the ones who have been moved out of the camps were just forced out. And so they don't have any place to live. You have a million people living in housing that's, uh, you know, that's basically unsafe, that they shouldn't be living in, that neither need repairs or are supposed to be demolished. And so, you know, they didn't even solve the most basic housing problem. So uh, of the uh, money from USAID, 67% uh, of that is going to inside the Beltway uh, contractors. Only 1% is going to Haitian firms. So again, the, the, you know, they're not, uh, they're not doing anything to build the capacity, even in the health ministry, for example, although they're starting to change that a little bit, uh, to, to deal with the, the, the reconstruction. And, you know, the worst thing of all, to me, is that they actually, you know, the UN troops actually brought this deadly disease of cholera to Haiti. Uh, 70, over 7,900 Haitians have been killed and uh, over 600,000 infected. In fact, most of the cholera infections in the whole world in the last couple of years since, the, uh, since they brought it there has been, have been in, in Haiti. So this is something that they created. They made this mess. Haiti didn't have cholera for over a century, and it's something that they're going to have to live with for years. And what are they doing? What have they done to, to just provide clean water and sanitation, uh, which most, most Haitians don't have access to sanitation, and probably 40% don't have uh, drinkable water. This is what you know spreads the disease. This is the cause of the disease, really, uh, in the way you get rid of the disease is to provide water and sanitation. And they haven't even done that. The UN hasn't even taken responsibility for having done this, even though everybody knows they did it. I mean, Bill Clinton uh, acknowledged it uh, in March, and uh, you had uh, you know, any number of scientific studies from the New England uh, Journal of Medicine, the Center on Disease Control. You know, all of these studies show that this disease was brought to Haiti uh, by UN troops. And they, they won't even, you know, now finally in December, you know, uh, two years after they brought cholera there, they finally say, okay, we're going to come up with a plan. We're going to have a 10 year plan to uh, get clean water and sanitation to Haiti and, of course, also the Dominican Republic. And, uh, and, but it's going to take years before they actually do anything. And in the meantime, they've even cut back. Uh, in the last year, they've cut back on cholera treatment centers and cholera uh, treatment units. So, uh, you know, 357 people died in the last uh, quarter of, of, of last year from uh, cholera. This is really an outrage. And I don't think it would be uh, permitted in any other country. Right. Now, when Canada talks about the failure of Haitian institutions, uh, some people argue there's a certain kind of irony to that because after the earthquake, wasn't it Canada, the United States, and the UN that kind of made sure that Haitian society returned to what it had been pre-earthquake, that the elites remained with the, with the, in power and, and the various institutions remained essentially serving those elites? Well, it's worse than that. I mean, yeah, why don't they have a government? Because, you know, the U.S. and Canada and France have 
uh, you know, overthrew the last uh, democratically elected uh, government in 2004. And that's when they brought in the UN troops. And I should say, you know, you know, a lot of people think the UN troops that brought the cholera to Haiti actually came in after the earthquake to help. But that isn't true. They actually came in after the coup in 2004, which was the second time that the United States overthrew uh, the democratically elected government in Haiti, the first uh, in just the last 20 years. You know, uh, the first time it was the same president. It was uh, Jean-Bertrand Aristide. He was overthrown the first time in, uh, in 1991. So why doesn't Haiti have a government? Because the so-called international community they never let them build a government, never let them have their own government. And uh, that's, you know, of course, the fundamental problem. And then you look at these troops who were never invited there. Then they bring this deadly disease and they're eating up, you know, most of the, uh, enormous amounts of money. In the last two years, the money that the U.N. Uh, troops have cost just to maintain. And these are people, you know, troops that the, the Haitians don't even want there. Uh, you know, they, that's. That's almost as much as you would need for the $2.2 billion for the whole 10 years, which, of course, the U.N. and the international community uh, doesn't have. So the money is there. They're using it to maintain this troop presence, to basically occupy this country. Uh, and they have no legitimate reason for it. I mean, this isn't, a, you know, sometimes they call them peacekeeping troops, but they're not peacekeeping troops. They weren't brought in. Uh, at any time during, uh, you know, a civil war or uh, to keep the peace. Uh, and, and there's no peacekeeping agreement under which they are there. So uh, this is one of the terrible ironies of the international community uh, running around and blaming the Haitians for the mess that they, they have created. All right, thanks for joining us, Mark. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network. Mm -hmm.